Hey there, good morning, Matt Warren here. I wanna share with you now about the spending plan. In the last video, we discussed the spending journal and the process of writing down daily what kind of income you have coming in. If you haven't done that, stop the video and, and just go ahead and do that for the last day. Um, write what, what did you make yesterday in the top right hand of your journal? What did you spend yesterday in, in the top right hand of your journal? Um, get very clear about the last 24 hours. And what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna take those numbers and put them now into the daily spending plan. So that there's a spending journal, which is actually a physical journal. We talk about that in the last video at length. Then we take, after we have put it into the spending journal, we go and put it into the spending plan, which is a form of a spreadsheet, whether it's Excel or it's a Google Sheets document that we recommend. Um, whatever you use, there is two different steps there. And it, it's important to realize that because it, it really helps me a lot when I'm doing my numbers. Um, if I, if I take the time to do the spending journal first, so I, I pull up the bank account, whether it's on my phone, if I'm traveling and I just, all I have is my laptop, I will pull up my, my uh, bank account on my phone and I'll have my, my spending plan uh, spreadsheet on my computer. If I'm at, at my office, I'll have the bank account on one screen or the bank account on the right side and the Excel spreadsheet on the left side so I can look at them both at the same time. But right in front of me is my spending journal. It's very easy. If you do this in this order, it's easy and it's smooth. If you are looking at the bank account to take whatever cleared the bank on whatever day and put it on that page of the, of the journal. So the bank account's gonna show what is in process or what has cleared the bank. And it's it's very easy to see, okay, today's the fifth. On the fourth, we went to this restaurant and th it cleared the bank. So I need to take that total and put and flip over my journal page, one page to that on the fourth and write under my income, which we already talked about, I'm going to write the expense of that restaurant. And I'll just put simply the number and where it was, like the number and the name of the place, um, the amount spent and the name of the place. Uh, that's my method of, of writing it down. If it says it cleared on 11-2, you know, the 2nd of November, then I will flip over a few pages in my journal to the second and I'll, I'll write it on that day. If if something has just processed today, I'll go ahead and write it on today's number. But when I'm doing my numbers and I'm doing my spending plan, I'm simply going back to yesterday's numbers and I'm trying to get like I'm for the last 24 hours, I'm trying to update my numbers for the last 24 hours. That's that's my goal in doing my numbers. It's just trying to stay current. And if you do that every day, it, you stay current on your numbers every day. Um, so we're not really worried about what's gonna clear today because when we do the numbers tomorrow, it'll be very clear. Uh, sometimes things take a day or two to actually process into the bank account. And I, I noticed that it says processing, it might take longer than one day. So I, I would not worry about filling out the spending journal for today. It's it's merely to make sure that there's nothing that's popped up on an older day. And I'll scroll down and looking at, like looking at the online bank account, I'll scroll down a little bit to make sure because sometimes things don't pop in to that uh, online uh, banking first. You know, it might show five or six or eight down on the list, something that cleared yesterday. Uh, so you have to kind of look up and down the bank account just to make sure everything that you've got is already in your spending journal on that page. There's a reason for doing the spending journal first. Do the spending journal first, because then when you pull up the spreadsheet, 
which we're, we'll do next, when you pull up the spreadsheet, it makes it so easy because you've got a column for every day. Every day gets a column, just like in the, in the spending journal, every day gets a page. So it's very simple to take what's written on Tuesday and put it on Tuesday's column. Uh, you, the only trick is to try to make sure that you get it in the right category. But once you do it for a while, these categories will make sense to you and it's it's not it's really not that complicated once you do it for a while and you have your um, your uh, categories set up so this is the spending plan that we have created uh, it starts off with the with, with time tracking and what we want to do is skip over that for now uh, but the spending plan for the day starts out with uh, income then it goes into spending as you can see here utilities housing transportation then uh, toward the bottom what we're going toward is is we'll be able to, to add up all of the expenses this daily solvency is when we take our daily income minus our daily expenses. So if we made $200 today and we spent $180 today, we were technically solvent for that day. I don't make a big deal out of this. It's just to resonate in my head. In fact, I really don't look at it that much, but it's just the practice of realizing that, hey, if I'm only making $200, I can't go spend $500. Uh, if, if I do that too many days in a row, I'm going to end up having to go back and use debt and that's not the goal so that line of, of, the, of daily solvency technically that's not the uh, the term that we normally use you know making uh, reaching solvency for that day means that you didn't go out and use unsecured debt you didn't uh, you weren't late on any payments to a landlord or a uh, you didn't take things from somebody and not offer them compensation for it. You know, you didn't have your neighbor cut your grass and didn't pay him, uh, things like that. Solvency is, is a big deal in this program. You didn't bounce a check, you know. Um, solvency is a big deal in this program. And I, 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 I want to drive home that this daily solvency is not mean that if you make 200 and you spent 300 and you aren't solvent on that day that doesn't mean you lost your solvency in this program it's simply a a, a tool that i created i had all the data it's just a tool and a formula that says income for the day total minus expenses for the day total equals is it a positive number or a negative number it's it's pretty straightforward the bank checking account balance line at the bottom of this day, I know I'm jumping to the very bottom, but this is important because every day I like to put what the bank account says that I have in the checking account for that day. I like to write it like Friday when I'm doing my numbers, I like to write at the bottom of Friday, what is my bank checking account balance? And I put that number in here. It just helps to resonate resonate that number so that if I pay the water bill and it's $100, but I only have 50 in my account, I, I realize I need to either transfer some money or hold that bill or go out and make some money, you know, drive Uber for the day or something. So uh, bank checking account balance. This has saved me. I, I added this line one day after I lost my solvency for four, for $4 and 35 cents. We were on vacation in Key West with my family. And I decided to not check my numbers one day before we left for the trip. My wife uh, paid the water bill and actually it was the electric bill. It, it was 200 and something dollars. And we had, what I thought was enough in the account. We were $4.35 short when it went through. And it just happened to go through on the day that I didn't check my account. 
So I'd lost my solvency, had to restart my solvency date. And so what I have this here for is uh, bank checking account balance. I'll write the balance. And if there's an outstanding bill or invoice that I've paid, but just hasn't gone through yet, I'll write that right here. Uh, just so that I can make sure that I, I'm not going to bounce a check and lose my solvency. So going back up to the top here, the income payment. So if you're a salary person, I want you to write that number that, that we talked about that we're writing at the top of our spending journal. I want you to write, write that daily take home pay number here. If you get, a, you know, if you work for a company and, and they match your 401k, that's income technically. So I, I like to put that on the number for the day that I get paid because that's the day that I get that 401k match. Uh, there's different ways to do this. If you have multiple sources of income, like, like say you have a B job or something that gives you income, you can list that here. Uh, it, it's just for you to make custom whatever sources of income that, that you have, put it in there. Uh, taxes, this is where when I get my paycheck, it's got federal and state taxes, and I, I like to put that in here just so I can see if it went, went up. Um, and, and I could also tell at the end of the doing my paycheck and balancing all of my uh, pay stub with what actually went into the bank account, I can see if it all makes sense if I have a line item for taxes. If you pay, um, I know sometimes my wife and I get quarterly estimated tax bills that our accountant sets up because she's a self-employed um, wedding planner. And as we get those estimated quarterly taxes, if we were to pay that, I would put that expense right here under taxes. So giving, if you go to a church and you give on a Sunday, it might go right here. I would suggest if you give money, whether it's a dollar to a, a, a meeting that you go to, a 12-step meeting, if you give a dollar to that, I would encourage you to put it here. Any income, any expense, whether you get, you know, put 50 cents into the air machine to put air in your tires, write it down. Savings. So any kind of contributions that come out of your check to a 401k, any kind of savings, if you're squirreling away some money to uh, put into savings, kid college, uh, kids college or an IRA, any any form of savings. This kind of savings account right here is just like, it, my wife and I have a little uh, automatic transfer set up. So every Friday, $50 gets transferred over to a, a savings account. Food, so I like to break down the grocery store versus eating out at restaurants. Eating out at restaurants is extremely expensive. It doesn't mean we need to go to, to bring that to zero. It's just good to be able to see at the end of the month, okay, like for example, I know that my family spends about $1,100 on groceries and we average about $200 to 225 maybe on eating out. Um, that, that's that, that's the ratio that's working for us right now. When money gets tight, for some reason, uh, it, it, if money were to get tight, the first thing to go would be eating out. Uh, you, the utilities, so if you're renting and, and you don't have these utilities because it's all encompassing, you know, you pay for it with your rent check, uh, that's okay, you can skip over this, but this is where if you own a house, you have a cable bill, you have an electric and gas bill. A lot of times you have a water bill. Housing. So what is that house bill, the rent payment? If it's due on the first of the month, that would go here. Transportation. So if you have a car and your partner has a car, uh, I like to keep track of the two different gas bills. You can group them all together if you want, whatever works for you. If you're a single person, that might not apply. 
vehicle maintenance. It's good to know how much you're spending on vehicle maintenance. I like to group that all into transportation. And then parking and Uber. Parking can get uh, crazy if you let it, you know, park wherever you want. Um, I, I'm gonna leave that right there, but you know, this is there's a place for parking in Uber. And, and if you are in a city that has a bus or a train and you ride that, you might want to change gas in car two to bus and train. Um, it helps. I because I know I have to write down where I parked, or excuse me, the amount that I paid for parking and the amount that I paid for Uber, I'm a little more conscious of. Uh, should I go up here 20 more feet and park in this parking place or should I park right up in front of the building and have to write down on my spending plan that I spent a dollar fifty on parking? I know it's small money, but as my granddaddy always said, take care of your pennies and the dollars will take care of themselves. Just that the act of writing these numbers down and your spending journal and the spending plan, uh, it, it just helps, it helps money management health so gym membership i have a place for that Med so my medicine and my partner's medicine and chiropractor insurance also i, I choose to group my daughter's uh, medicine and, and doctor's visit and health in with my partner uh, that's just what i do because normally if they go to the, the dentist they go to, together um, so I like to keep mine separate though, so that I can track that. Insurance, these are the standard types of insurance. It's a place for that. Pets, pool membership, vacation, recreation. So just because we're in the, a money program and we're trying to work on our dollars and our cash, doesn't mean we don't get to go on vacation and do some things for recreation. Uh, Granted, it's somewhere between five and 10% of our total uh, take home pay that we have left over it can go to pets, pool memberships, vacation, recreation. Uh, it just helps that when we do spend something on ourselves, we go on a vacation trip or we do something on a Saturday, we go down to Soda City or uh, the farmer's market and have a good time. That's That falls under vacation, recreation. Personal and household. So this this category here, when I go buy plants for the yard or go to Lowe's to fix a pipe that broke or buy supplies at the dollar store for Ziplocs and uh, trash bags and things like that, home improvement items, all that goes into this category for personal and household. I'm not very good at breaking out um, small things that are on the grocery bill. So if my wife or I are, are shopping for groceries and we buy supplies that that get grouped into the uh, grocery bill, I don't break those out. They are what they are. I just call them groceries. But if it's a separate trip to the dollar store, which is right by our house, and, and we buy some things like trash bags and Ziplocs that are separate items, I'll, I'll just put that under supplies. So personal things like haircuts, um, face lotions, teeth, toothbrush, toothpaste, haircuts, all that goes on that line for me, my partner and my daughter's haircuts and teeth appointments and things like that, dental appointments, all that goes under this line. My fund money, my partner's fund money, and my wife and child if they go buy clothes that goes here under this line item 88. Um, so the debt snowball we talked about the debt snowball in a previous video if i spend toward a paying down debt that goes here um, I, I, i've got one more debt that i'm paying down and i, I do that a little bit each month that goes in this line. If you have multiple cards and credit cards, you can simply insert a row. You, you, I just right click and insert one row here. Uh, and you can put American Express or whoever else that you owe, owe money to. 
but again, the debt and miscellaneous spending goes toward the very bottom of the spending plan. We want to take care of ourselves first before we get into taking care of a bunch of debt. I would encourage you to uh, to not have many things that are in this miscellaneous spending plan. My dad used to say all the time when I was a kid that an IRS red flag is miscellaneous. You don't want to have anything labeled miscellaneous with your business. Um, so, but this is for things that I've forgotten. So it says here, stuff forgotten to plan for, unplanned expenses, like Christmas, birthdays, Mother's Day, uh, tax and Valentine's Day. People would argue that Christmas is a planned activity. It happens every year. You know, Mother's Day happens every year, but I haven't gotten into a good habit for planning for that. But as we're starting to buy Christmas presents and things, this is where I account for all those type expenses. So let's see what I missed here. We talked about determining the categories. So if these categories don't work for you, please change them. That's what they're there for. You can make, you can make them custom. There are sometimes, many times actually, on most situations, if I have here that my gym membership is $36, I will right click on there and it says insert note. I like to simply put $36 stronghold and I'll put the date is uh, 9-3-21. When you hover over it, it shows up. If you want to delete that, you can simply right click on it again and it says clear notes. And we're back to normal, but that's that just shows you how to insert a note if, if you want to insert a note. Uh, the formulas in this spreadsheet are adding up the weekly totals. And again, we're, we're simply looking at six or seven days in a week. Don't worry about trying to make a week be Monday through Sunday. That's too complicated. It's really hard to do the spreadsheet. I've tried it many times. This is the best way that I've found that works. Whatever the first day is of the month becomes the you know, if, if it's a Wednesday, it's a Wednesday. If it's a Friday, it's a Friday. But don't try to, I would not try to coincide the start of the week to be Monday every time. It just, it is very complicated. It, you have to cut and paste and copy and hide and it, it gets really complicated and sloppy. So I always will uh, keep these numbers the same and just change if the first falls on a Tuesday next month, then I'll just change that to make it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so on and so forth. So you'll see here that this says September week one, September week two, September week three. These add up and you can see week five is a short week. There's nothing wrong with that. They add up to the weekly totals here. Then we have September total actual. So this adds up each of the weekly totals. Okay. You can see here the formula is the sum of all of these weekly totals. These are very important because um, we're going to take these totals and put them into our monthly PRG dashboard. So here where it says September, we're going to go in and have these, we have these same categories on the left-hand side. We're going to add, we're going to put these, these numbers in here. So if you change a category on the daily spending plan, no problem. When we get a month of numbers and we're going to go and put it into the PRG dashboard, what we'll do is we need, we just need to go in and update the categories on this monthly PRG dashboard to correspond with the daily spending plan. So what I would do is I would encourage you that if it's now, like for example, it's it, we're in November now, but here are September's numbers as well as October's numbers. 
I would encourage you, if it was me, to, to stop the video, open up your bank account, print off the last 30 days, you know, print off last month. So we're on November 5th today. You've got a full month of data for October and a full month of data for September, maybe even go back to August, whatever you have time for. But I would encourage you to print off the bank statement for October and just start with one month and go line item by line item and say, okay, it says here on the 5th of October that I spent money on vehicle maintenance. Go in here and put it whatever that was. And when you finish that bank statement for the month of October, you're going to have October's numbers. Go then and take those totals that are at the end of October. Right here, take these totals and put them into the monthly dashboard. What will happen is we'll start to get really useful data and we'll be able to take the average of the, the past 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, six months, 12 months, we'll be able to take 12 month average so that, so I can tell, and you can tell, hey, I spend $800 on food. I spend $50 a month on my pets. Whatever those numbers are, we'll be able to tell that with the average. So I'm gonna stop right there and let me check my notes here and make sure I got everything. We talked about the, the income, the spending, the, the debt repayment, and we touched on a little bit of savings on a daily basis and how that looks from a daily spending plan basis. Next, we're going to look at it from a holistic PRG dashboard standpoint. So stay tuned for the next video and we'll dive more into this PRG dashboard in more depth. Thanks for listening.